Hello. I'm here to talk about engaging disaster elegantly. Engaging means learning to understand. Disaster refers to climate change and global warming induced sea level rise and storm surges. And elegantly refers to wisdom and compassion. Imagine that you are a teenager in a family living in a very comfortable neighborhood and unbeknownst to you, some family who is basically unfriendly moves in next door and they have a vicious dog. This dog is loosely leashed to a small peg and occasionally tears loose and terrorizes the entire neighborhood. You, with your good heart and your good head, become a sort of counselor for your family as it addresses this looming disaster. Ignoring the disaster is not an option. Escaping from it or protecting yourself from it is not much of an option either. So you decide, collectively, to consider retreating from this looming disaster, from moving. And you, with your good heart and your good head, have a very important role to play to advise while the entire family is mired in indecision and worry, where are we going to move, how are we going to move, when. And most importantly, you will help them confront the impending sadness of having to cut ties and roots and moving on. This is probably going to be your most important role as you become a counselor to your family. Henceforth, and for the rest of your lives, any mention of the disaster of storm surge and, globe and sea level rise will bring that mad dog image to your mind. This will be true for the rest of your lives. Talking about sea level rise and disasters, we've already had two of those this year in Boston. One in January and one in March. Storm surges, like mag dogs, are very difficult to defend against. Eventually you'll be asked, because of your good experience in uh, helping your family move and retreat from looming disaster, you'll be asked to help a small community that lives on the shoreline and is threatened by sea level rise to discuss the issues and help them decide to perhaps move and retreat. You will reach for information, such as this information about what it will look like in 2030 or 2050 when there is a two-foot sea level rise and a five-foot storm surge. This map by Sasaki explains how the areas in blue will indicate where storm surges will flood local communities in Winthrop, in Revere, in East Boston, near the airport, in Charlestown, and most importantly, most of Cambridge and most of Boston. You will make this even more dramatic with this view from the Prudential Tower looking north, where a similar storm surge and flooding inundates the Back Bay residential area in Boston, and MIT and large parts of Cambridge further afield in the north. You will zoom out to explain where we are by taking this image of the Metro Boston estuary. It shows an estuary 
and in this place, our estuary, shows where our Mystic River and Charles River and Neponset River empty out into the ocean. Our metro estuary is unique in some respects because in the north, in Swampscott, it has shoulder area, a high area, and again, in the south, in Cohasset, it has a shoulder area. These two are shown in the bottom right corners of this image. And you'll zoom out further to explain how Boston is the hub of the economic engine of Greater Boston. 422 billion in annual GDP in 1916. The people who make this engine work commute from New Hampshire in the north, from midway through Massachusetts in the west, and from Rhode Island in the south to make this engine function. If Boston is inundated and doesn't work well, the economic engine is in jeopardy. You will reach for an example that I and two other architects who take regional views proposed, namely a 14 mile long barrier shown in green between the highlands of Swampscott in the north and the highlands of Cohasset in the south. The projected cost of that dike barrier was estimated to, be, to range between 30 and 80 billion dollars. That's enough to actually uh, frighten every governor, every mayor of the Metro uh, Mayor's Alliance out of their skin. And they decided not to pursue this option. They were spooked. And the result is, by not exploring this opportunity, perhaps an unrealistic one, they expose $80 billion of properties in Boston alone, tens of thousands of residents in those low-lying communities in our Metro Boston estuary, all the institutions and uh, businesses that are located in flood-prone Boston, and therefore, without realizing it, by losing the tax base, they're going to lose their jobs. Back to this looming disaster. That image will prompt you, as you have been invited, to help a small community of those of us who live in one of the low-lying communities to address that monster, sea level rise and storm surge disaster. You will ask us to think like modern pioneers, but unlike these Oregon pi pioneers who went into the wilderness pretty much unprepared, you will remind us that we will migrate with knowledge and understanding. And you will encourage us to do it under the banner of dirt. Do it right this time. And you'll show us what doing it wrong can look like. You will ask us to learn from nature. Nature has an amazing palette of examples of how to do it right. Most particularly, its root systems, which are the distribution systems for its nutrients and its information between plants of different species. And you will emphasize how that root system is intricately interlaced with other roots, and that that is what makes nature's systems both robust and work well. You will contrast this to our man-made infrastructure systems, such as highway intersections, railway lines, power lines, pipelines under our streets. And you will encourage us, as we contemplate 
creating new homes and new communities to interlace and interweave our infrastructure system with that of nature, thereby making both more robust. Most importantly, you will search out like-minded individuals in our small pioneering group who look at the looming disaster of sea level rise soberly, help us overcome as we mill around mired in indecision and worries about how to do it, where to do it, and most importantly, how to learn to cut our ties and roots and establish new ones elsewhere, that collectively is where you will provide the most service to the new pioneers. You reach for an example like this that interlaces and interweaves strands of different color and sometimes superimposes them and still becomes a weave that some people find beautiful. You will reach for whimsical examples and ask us to become creative in what we reach for, such as tree houses, even though they don't have much infrastructure that could make this thing work. And you will ask us to look at examples like the self-contained and self-sufficient termite mound on the left, which is totally air-conditioned and exists within its own bioregion for its food production, or instead, or also in addition, reach for this aluminum cast of an anthill to once again show that complexity and intricacy can be beautiful. In this manner, you will help us modern pioneers move on to be resilient, self-supporting, and devoted to doing it right as we engage disaster elegantly.